Okay, so next, I guess we can do the uh, belts, armband and stuff. Um, we'll differentiate it, because if I use the browns that I used before, it'll basically be the same color. I'm just kind of blend in, so I don't want that. Where, oh where, it's my dark flesh. Here we go. Dark flesh. Classic Games Workshop paint. Dark Flesh is more of a reddish brown. This is a good base coating color for if you're wanting to use like a darker red as a highlight, not straight to like a fiery red, like a what is it? Vazdaka red, or if you're a Privateer Press guy, then uh, Kator red base. You don't want to use those as highlights right away. More like use those as like extreme highlights instead. You use this as a base coat. Or even a layer highlight on top of some darker brown. Then you put a uh, nice dark red like... What is it? I still have my red gore. So I don't know what the new one's called. Red gore or uh, sanguine highlight um, for privateer press people yeah score in red that works too wazdaka uh, wazdaka is the new blood red um, like mechanicus red or something like that I know that's not what it's called but that's the, I guess, the general kind of name. <laughs> they keep changing it. I can't keep track. Okay. Looking good so far. Okay, now we're going to the silver. We might as well. Since that's pretty much the only thing left to paint. We are going to have... Um, five points of silver on here. It's gonna be the forearm guards, the sword, obviously, and the knee guards. We already have the dark flesh on um, three points. And that's my phone. I'm just gonna put that Nothing's more important than streaming, right? There's a little, little thing. A little bit that I forgot to cut off. You know, when you're painting, it's always good to have, like, um, a knife or a file or something like that handy. Because if you have some th some um, flash or mold lines that you missed you should really just be able to quickly uh, remove it without much hassle otherwise you're gonna finish it and then or you're gonna keep painting and then it's just gonna drive you crazy Cause it's like you're putting in all this work on the model and then there's this one flaw that no amount of paint other than straight up just dumping paint on it until the mold line goes away it's gonna it's gonna fix it right we might as well get rid of it it's okay if uh, that little itty bitty bit doesn't have primer on it just as long as um, 
as long as it's clean, right? So those straps, I also forgot to paint. We're not going to paint those silver because I don't want those to be little chain, chain things. Those are going to be um, dark flesh as well. different colors for her. It's nice to have like different colors along the model, especially if there's like long long uh, uninterrupted parts of the model. Like the back here is fine because it ends here and then just kind of gets a little complicated down there so aside from like Hero, like composition wise, this is, a fun, this is pretty good. It's not, it's not like, you know, ultra mega detailed, right? It, you know, looks good, has, you know, enough doodads and bits to keep you entertained, right? It's just a game piece. It's not like, uh, your personalized general on the battlefield, right? Although this is like a half RPG game. So maybe, maybe you this is like a good base model too, right? For conversion work. If you're to sculpt, you're and can't really do forms, human form, or humanoid form. And this is like a good start, right? Because the pose is already there. It's like fantasy style. It's not a human. Just add on to it. Add on whatever it is you're into. Make it a bigger sword. Actually, that would be my first, my first suggestion is to change the sword on this, on all of them actually, because. These models are made from like a soft plastic. If anyone has played a uh, Super Dungeon Explorer, they would know. It's a soft plastic, and what happens is it's more durable, quote unquote, in that it doesn't snap. Right? It doesn't snap when it's bent, or it doesn't break. And because of that, uh, they bend instead, right? Now this could be seen as, by the way, I'm using Nullin Oil to uh, wash the silver. This could be seen as a good thing, like a blessing and a curse actually, because I'm going to also wash the base here. It's a blessing and a curse because one, uh, your models aren't going to break. They'll probably snap off the base before any bits of them actually break. However, when they bend, the bits stay bent. And it's very hard to get them back into the right place. The best way to fix them, aside from replacing them with brass rods or re-sculpting the bit is to get like hot water just like a, a resin model in order to fix the pieces you either get a heat gun or just hot water like boiling almost and you just soak it in there for a few seconds take it out bend it into the right shape or bend it into the right shape in the water keep the shape and then transfer it over to cooler water. And I totally forgot why I brought out the Nolan oil in the first place. But yeah, when you transfer it over to the cool water, obviously cools it down and um, hopefully keeps the piece in place.
Unfortunately, some of the time, it doesn't work. Tried it on a couple models before. It had this, like, um, there were some bad guy monsters in this game that have staffs. They're like necromancers or something like that. They're long and thin, and during the shipping process, um, they got bent, and these staffs were doing basically 180s on the model. The staffs didn't break off. Nope. They're, it's a testament to them. To the plastic technology but I could not for the life of me uh, set them back into the right place so I clipped them off and replaced them with brass rods fortunately that's the easiest one to do because they're just you know cylinders they're staffs right so a brass rod is a very easy fix. But something like the sword here, you can see it, it is bent, uh, just kind of right there, right in the middle. And that's a little bit harder because you need the right size um, styrene piece or sculpting or whatever, resin bit, and then, you know, glue it back on. And then by doing that, it makes it, you know, less durable. I'm gonna paint the hair now. Hair and tail. Whereas the brass rods, because like the hands were holding them like that, right? You could just drill a hole in the hand and then slide the brass rod right into it and it worked perfectly. Actually, it actually made it look better in my opinion. Um, although I would have liked to transfer some of the detail from the old staff. I think there was like a, a handle, but that was about it. Um, but I made it work. So this this highlighting uh, layer is actually um, Jack Bone from Privateer Press. This is a really good one. This is my replacement for um, Commando Khaki or whatever the new word for it is. But I am planning I'm getting like a Vallejo equivalent since I love the model air so much. I should also try the uh, model color and game color lines from Vallejo. See what the difference is and how it all works and stuff. Cause I got the I got the model air paints specifically for my airbrush. What's next? What is next? What is next? Let's do the red. The red is good. Bam! Red gore. Blast from the past. Nice blob. Thin, thin brush for this. And it's too bad that um, I don't know if this is still going on, but um, the states was having United States, like America, was having like a embargo or some kind of restriction on the sale of sable hairs. Not sure, I didn't really read into it. Probably something about hunting sable and was unethical or whatever. 
and the production kind of stopped, which sucked. So Canada up here doesn't produce sable hair. The only other place that produces sable hair is Europe, I think. And the prices of sable hair brushes skyrocketed. Absolutely ridiculous. Fortunately, I managed to get <laughs> this Windsor & Newton brush and a couple others uh, when it was just at the point of being absolutely outrageous. This this was like fifteen dollars or something like that. Totally dumb. But before long, like this brush was like twenty bucks or something like that. Yeah. Kinda sucked. Hoping that's over soon, or at least I find a European seller that won't charge me an arm and a leg for shipping across the pond. Let's do the clothing, I suppose. Let's do where where's my uh, here we go. That's ultramarines blue. Blast from the past as well. Uh, I believe this is now like some kind of Warhammer Fantasy or, well, Age of Sigmar uh, thing. Well, Warhammer Fantasy, now that the world has been destroyed. So, this stuff is, it's like, oh, what's it called? It's like Middenheim Blue or something like that. Of course, I'm sure I'm totally wrong. do the silver this is privateer press quicksilver this is my replacement for uh, mithril silver or well rune fang silver from games workshop bigger bottle basically the same formula and works just as well in my eyes. Unfortunately that um, Privateer Press's line doesn't have as many or doesn't coincide as much with or doesn't coincide enough with Games Workshop paints. I really do like the colors at least from Games Workshop. Definitely not the price. The only alternative, well, alternatives are uh, Reaper and Vallejo, and there is one hobby store in another city in my area. So I live in like uh, the outskirts of Vancouver, called a place called Surrey, and the only place that sells. Um, Vallejo and Reaper is Imperial Hobbies in Richmond, which is like a half hour drive away. I'm 
like all these other hobby stores that are around me just like 10 minutes away right it's like oh. and then right it's really hard to just go out and get stuff from them so the best way for me to get this stuff is online so I, I look on Amazon every once in a while for a good deal it pops up and I hear uh, Minotaur actually is a good one um, if you have an airbrush. Use airbrushes, absolutely fantastic line. This Army Painter. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's that's another alternative, Army Painter. Unfortunately, um, I think one of the places near me actually sells Army Painter, but the line is so limited. The ones that you know are available to me, um, just wherever, right? little itty bitty dot. I'm gonna do the eyes. And like the last model that I did, he had a blindfold. This one does not, so I need to do the eyes. And we're just going to do regular uh, white with pupil. We don't need to do anything fancy like red eyes or anything like that. There we go. You see that? Oh yeah. She looks scary already. She is the knight, fear her. Okay. Next. We'll finish off the clothing with Shadow Grey, one of the Games Workshop paint. This is kind of like the same, um, same brightness as Ultramarine's blue is. However, this is like a desaturated blue, right? It's like a gray. And when you highlight it, highlight with it, or layer highlight, the, what I'm doing basically, mostly highlighting, um, you're changing the tone of Ultramarine blue. And now suddenly the the feeling of it becomes like a worn cloak when ultramarine blue was actually kind of vibrant before. Although the uh, I should show you um, in the in difference for enchanted blue. That one's more significant. You can tell a lot better. Hey, you'll see it'll see that technique a lot um, for painting like showcase models, particularly from Games Workshop that I noticed, and a little bit from Privateer Press. But Games Workshop is the one where they have a lot of edge highlighting, lots of lots of um, edge highlighting rather than layering or blending even. And they do that by one, you know, having lots of washes or glazes and stuff. And two is the colors that they choose to highlight change the tone of the base color. Like they don't they don't do much with the actual base color other than you know glaze it and stuff. But once you put the that highlight in there, it adds it like tricks your eye into adding some more color where there isn't. It's really neat. Okay, so I added her eyes. Her hair is done. Done, done, done. Good. Pretty much done, actually. And she looks pretty good. That does! Okay, good. And now let's see. The cobblestone is dry. So we're gonna take our trusty 
very trusty Citadel dry brush. This is the old style paintbrush. If you guys remember that, this is like from a decade ago. I'm just going to take that. I'm just going to plop that right on. This is standard dry brushing, just take a big blob, rub it against a surface, like um, or a towel, like a paper towel or whatever. And you just do that. Bam! You suddenly have cobblestone. With picked out picked out details and everything. It looks great. And I want a little bit all over the edge. Make sure all the edges are picked out. And because it's a dry brush, you don't need to really wait for it to dry because it's already dry. You just go straight into washing again. Now, obviously you can uh, stop and you know not add any more colors but I will and here's what's gonna happen so I have 